Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and bringing on bite-sized pieces. Today, we're just going to do a, a quick follow-up to our live stream, which we did a couple hours ago. And uh, what we did this morning was we talked about the three reasons why Bitcoin and cryptocurrency took a big dump, essentially. And uh, really what it came down to was China, China, and uh, just a little information from Grayscale. So the two stories about China was that uh, in one part you had uh, China saying that they were going to uh, stop working with uh, cryptocurrency digital assets uh, as far as like the banks, which is weird because we have heard that and they've been banning this for uh, years. So I don't know why this uh, story kept coming up. I think there was one reason, which was uh, the fact that they had closed all the loopholes, no more OTC uh, type of buys, which kind of you know gets Binance out of the picture and a couple of other things. So. That was, uh, that was expected, it was coming, and, and here it is. And the second uh, piece that we talked about, well, we talked about Bitcoin miners, uh, the operations being shut down. These are large Bitcoin mining operations. We're talking about BTC and Antpool and all those different things. And it wasn't like the Chinese government just marched in there and said, close it down. They just said, cut the power and uh, the no more mining uh, in Bitcoin. And this is forcing a lot of these miners to move out of China, which is good news. Unfortunately, um, for the news and publications, they look at this as negative and people who don't know, uh, they see this as very negative. And of course, because of that, uh, you see the price uh, take a big tumble. On top of that, we also talk about Grayscale. Uh, they have a, this lockup period, which is going to expire. So over the next, uh, right now actually, and then over the next month or so, you're gonna see more of a sell pressure. So there was that part. But the piece that really was interesting, and I think is the main crux of what is going on, is Bitcoin mining. And it really came down to this article right here, which was Chinese Bitcoin mining pools see further hash rate plunge on Sichuan shutdown order. And we already talked about this and it went into effect on June 18th. It was supposed to uh, really ramp up or actually conclude on June 20th, which was yesterday. Today is June 21st. It is uh, 1 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. So this all made the hash rate power uh, drop. Uh, you went from uh, tera hashes of, you know, over 100 tera hashes. Now we're at 90 and it's going to keep dropping because all these uh, big, huge operations, they have to shut down. They, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it because there's no power and they're not going to get power. So when I looked at this, me personally, I was like, this is great news. And of course, the market doesn't respond like that. So what I wanted to do was take a step back and not just listen to me. I want you to hear this from the horse's mouth, from people who are in the Bitcoin mining operations. And uh, what I was able to do is uh, I talked to Alex Masculi on the Alex Masculi show, and he got me in contact uh, with the CEO of Newmine. And that is uh, Ibrahim al -Kurd. I think I said his name right, hopefully. And uh, I'm going to interview him because when we talked on the phone, he's over in Europe. We talked on, uh, on a conversation this, just this morning after we did the uh, live stream. He said, people don't understand. This is what we want. This is good news. And I'm going to just going to let him explain exactly why this is, exactly what's going on, and exactly why this is going to be a boom for, for the industry as far as Bitcoin mining uh, in Europe and North America, Central America, and different places where we needed to get China out of this equation as quickly as possible and let them do whatever they want to do. So uh, we're going to take a look at that. But uh, just so you know, before we get in, new mine. They've been in business since uh, in the early 2013, 14, 15 uh, era, somewhere around there. And uh, they've been doing a lot of things with with Bitcoin and crypto mining. They've got uh, different mining rigs that they do for sale. Their services range from just individual mining rigs over to hosting and co-location, also up to mining infrastructure. So very big mining operations. And they've been involved around since, let me see, what is it? Uh, 2015, yeah. So um, yeah, getting access to the cryptocurrency ministry can be challenging since 2015. We've simplified the process. And uh, they've gone a long way, done a lot of things. So they are in the thick of it. They know exactly what's going on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna bring on Ibrahim and I'm gonna have Alex here and just uh, hear from them horse's mouth. And, and after talking to him, I became more bullish than I have uh, as far as like what's going on in the situation. So let's just jump right in and uh, let Ibrahim tell you. All right, everybody. So um, I explained pretty much what's going on with the market. We know it's not doing so hot right now, but like I talked about, 
it's not so much about uh, the overall view of what it is or what the news makes it out to be. It is the reality that is. And there's only one person that can really help us. Well, actually, really two guys. One is my friend Alex Mascioli over Trade the Chain, co-founder. He's stepping in just to give us some insight. Alex, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. And then also uh, the gentleman I was talking about before, Ibrahim el -Kord, he is the CEO uh, of uh, New Mine. And since he's been in this industry since 2015, the, the question I got to ask you, uh, Ibrahim, is, is this positive or is this negative for the Bitcoin mining community? Yeah, I think that people have a habit of panicking when news like this comes out. And uh, you really got to look at the news and think about what it means for the market longer term. Um, I think people just need to chill out. And, and here's why. So two thirds of uh, two thirds around 66% of the world's hash rate comes from China right now for Bitcoin mining. So China controls a massive monopoly of the mining hash power. Now, a lot of people, they talk about, um, you know, Bitcoin being decentralized and whatnot, but actually two thirds of hash rate comes out of China. So what we've got now is we've had since 2013, China is always banning Bitcoin, uh, putting restrictions on trading, banning this and banning that. Um, and now they finally kind of put the nail in the coffin for the miners and said, get out. Um, so what we're seeing now is a massive movement of Chinese miners outside of China to jurisdictions that are much more friendly. Now, the Chinese government uh, and China as a whole is known for not liking things that it can't control. And crypto is a perfect example of something that the government can't control. So um, now what's going to happen is you can have this big shift of miners outside of China into places like North America, which have much more crypto friendly uh, laws in place. Um, and it's great for, you know, North American mining companies uh, or people that do business in North America like us, because now we've got a massive demand for uh, miners wanting to, to work outside of China. So it's been, it's been great for us. Perfect. So, so this leads me to two questions. First of all, as this was approaching, because it, it, it started in June 18th, there was the whole shutdown was supposed to happen. And then in June 20th, it was supposed to be end game. That was it leading up to this. Uh, so the first question for you, Abraham is, how have you seen the response from the people who are reaching out to you and what they want to do as far as relocation? And then Alex, the next question will be for you, because I know you, you still have your, your foot in the waters as far as like hedge funds and the different people. What has been your uh, consensus as people have reached out and actually talked to you about Bitcoin? So Ibrahim, I'll, I'll ask you first. Sure. So the people, people that are miners, um, you know, Chinese miners and other miners, they're really, really desperate actually to get, to get any sort of um, hosting capacity that they can get because it's so sold out. I mean, we can't really get people hosted for the for the next couple of months at least because we're everything is sold out in North America, um, yeah. a lot of Europe as well. So, and people are willing to pay a massive premium actually to, to get up on mining. So the desperation is is evident, and you know, obviously it's good if you're on the selling end, but it's also I mean, we saw this back in 2017 where yeah. the demand far exceeded. Uh, the supply of um, you know of hosting for machines so we're seeing something happen again but you know now it's because of China and uh, you know what I've said to, to, to the guys I work with and stuff is that the Chinese government have done the best marketing for us that they could ever do right they called everyone get out and now it's great for business yeah that's perfect okay I'll, I'll have a follow-up in, in a second Alex what do you got for for on, on your side the people are talking to you like hey this is we're all out or are they like or, or do they just or do they actually understand what's going on Big money exactly. Yeah, I mean, um, there, there's first of all the uh, the hedge funds, the institutional guys. They they have a pretty good understanding, right? They um, they you know you have people like Ibrahim who are at this level, and yes. they have people who want to talk to them, garner as much information facts as possible. I mean, this is timely. I literally just got off the phone 15 minutes ago with a multi billion dollar traditional hedge fund out of the states that has a, a sleeve uh, run by couple portfolio managers in crypto and they actually just de-risked their whole uh, all their positions and uh, during the weekend came out of all positions um so i mean that's a telling sign right there yeah. uh, i think it's i think it's a wait and see try to figure it out uh, approach um, but I think it's people like Ibrahim who are going to get a lot of questions, a lot of phone calls asking, you know, what intelligence is on the side and what it, how it's going to possibly affect the market. Yeah. So, I mean, so the, the follow up question I had, Ibrahim, is all these Chinese Bitcoin miners, did they did they think that this wasn't going to happen or, or did they just play this a little bit too long? Because it sounds like they're now they're playing catch up when they should have been a little bit. They're being more reactive than proactive, it sounds like. Yeah, I think some of the miners before, we saw some transition to outside of China for some of the Chinese miners. 
but yeah. obviously this has forced them to, to get out. But um, I think that a lot of these, because labor is so cheap in China and electricity is often very cheap, they were just trying to prolong this as much as possible. And I think a lot of people saw it coming, right? That the Chinese government was cracking down on trading of crypto assets and investing in crypto assets. So mining was the next thing that they were going to transition to. So I would say a lot of these guys saw it coming, but they wanted to drag it out as long as possible. Yeah. So how do you see this playing out over the next weeks and months oh, as far as like setting up mining operations? Because you, you just said... There's so much demand, but there's not enough supply. So how does this all, how do you see this moving into the future? Yeah, I mean, for, for companies like us, it's like a scramble to, to get up and yeah. to get as much capacity up as possible, you know, as quickly as possible. Um, you know, one of, one of the concerns um, is that um, if we have a very large um, Chinese client base um, and then we go into, uh, you know, a prolonged bear market, you know, are these guys going to, um, you know, fulfill the, the hosting contracts, right? Um, and the concern there is, you know, if these guys are in China, then it's going to be harder to get them to kind of pay the hosting contracts for, for these clients that are there. But I think, you know, for us, it's just a scramble to get up as, uh, as quickly as possible and get hosting capacity as, as quickly as possible so we can fulfill this, fulfill this. But I mean, we're trying to be as fair as possible. We're trying to maintain demand from, um, you know, people within Europe and North America and also fulfill some of the Chinese demand as well. Yeah. I don't, I mean, to, to me personally, maybe Alex feels the same way. I don't care where it goes. I don't care if it goes to Europe. I don't care if it goes North America, Central America, South America, as long as it's outside of China. So when, so when people are talking to you, where, where do you see them setting up the majority to where you have cheap electricity and then the regulations are actually uh, positive for crypto? Is it North America or is there some other place that's a little bit better? I mean, Canada, U.S. There's certain reason, regions that are that are better, right? Like um, North Carolina, Washington State, um, mm. some places in New York. It's usually places with renewable energy sources like hydropower. Uh, yeah. Within Europe, we've got places like um, Iceland. Um, you've got Norway. Uh, you know, these sort of regions that have renewable energy sources as well. So uh, it depends on where, but usually in each of these continents, you've got places that have good regions to host. I mean, in South America, you've got some incredibly cheap electricity sources and got really cheap um, labor as well. So sometimes you get all the machines like the S9s going there um, because then they're still profitable to run. So uh, it, as you said, it doesn't really matter as long as it goes outside of China. I mean, f for the educated eye, for the professional eye, in my eyes, China banning crypto mining should pump the price, you know, from a long term health yeah. perspective, not dump the market. Why should it dump the market? Yeah, I, I don't get it. Like, okay, Alex, so we, we were just on Alex's show, we're doing a live stream and we we're talking about this. Alex, why does this not pump the price? Because it should pump the price, right? But no, it's the exact. I, no, I, I think it's uh, it's just like low volume Sundays, right? I think, uh, you know, when it comes to mining and there, you have such a massive band, as Ibrahim said, 60 something percent plus coming out of China, I think it's a it's a worrisome thing. And now you have this lag time of setting up new operations. And so when we're talking from the trading side on the show about, you know, range bound sideways trading in the market going throughout the summer, I mean, think of what Ibrahim's talking about right here and think about the time and effort that it's going to take to set up all new mining farms. It, it's 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 put a pause in the market, so to speak, right now. Exactly. But, but Ibrahim, just like we talked about on the phone, even though these Bitcoin mining operations are shutting down, the, the difficulty level should also decrease as well. Yeah. So, so it sounds like that would be like a win for like a small time, a small time operation, maybe. Yeah, just for, for a period, right? So until um, the, there's more hosting capacity outside of China to fulfill the demand, and these machines have to be physically transported over. So right now it takes us around two weeks to get machines from China to North America. It takes us around, depends on the volume, but usually a few weeks, um, you know, several thousand machines take a, a couple of weeks to install, right? So there's going to be this, this period where we're likely to see a reduction in hash rate, but it's not going to be prolonged, right? Because a lot of these guys will be able to get these machines back online as the hosting capacity um, goes online and these data centers are built. I mean, now you've got a lot of um, even um, custom custom produced uh, shipping containers that are used for mining. So, um, of, you know, mining has been around since Bitcoin has been around since proof of work um, cryptocurrencies have been around. So people have engineered systems that can get up and mining very quickly. Um, so it doesn't take very long to get a, a mining container or a data center up and running. Can I ask Ibrahim a philosophical market question? <laughs> Absolutely. Let's hear it. 
even though even though it's going to only take let's say a couple of weeks before they're up and running is that just a tad too long at this point for the retail participants in the market to hang on to let's say for lack of a better word hope could this be could this precipitate uh, a downward market just because of the time decay that it's taking to relocate these machines and and of course this is just a gut feeling of yours i'm asking yeah i think uh i think generally the retail investors have taken this news to be negative so i think that you know the the cascade of down downwards price action has, has already happened it's happening and it's already yeah. happened right and uh you know it doesn't it won't take much more news bad news to drag the market down you know it this market is very fragile i mean just you know, we, we've seen the impact that someone like Elon Musk has had on the market where he can literally pump the price or dump the price based on tweets, right? So now we've got an entire government which is anti-crypto. Uh, and, it ha you know, it's been anti-crypto for a very long time. But what I say is, you know, China can't do much more damage to crypto now. They've done a lot of controls on the trading. Now mm -hmm. they've banned the mining. So that's it in terms of the damage that the Chinese can do, which is great, okay? So, uh, you know, when Bitcoin is... In the long term, most likely going to be considerably more than it than it, than it is now. It's going to be, um, you know, much healthier for this space. Yeah, I gotta agree. Like I'm, I'm always so sick about the same stories over and over again. Like the one we just talked about. So now, if we can get rid of China, and nothing against the Chinese people, it's the Chinese government. If they want to do, go this route, that's fine. That's fine. It'll allow us to to flourish and actually grow the cryptocurrency space. This is great. Uh, I feel like it's great news. But again, like Ibrahim and uh, and Alex said. It's not going to be seen like that. But you at home watching this video, just remember a lot of negative news is going to come out. Take a look at this video, share this video so people will understand that this is actually a positive thing moving forward for the rest of the 5 billion people in the world. I, so we lost 1.4 billion people. Sorry, China, but that's how it goes. We, we, that's how it is. So anyhow, before we take off, uh, any last words of wisdom for everybody? Alex, I'll start with you for the, uh, for the crypto investor. Yeah, I mean, at this point, um, unless unless you're a retail investor and you need the money, uh, it's there's no point in selling out of your position at this moment. I don't think um, that's just my opinion. Uh, you know, we've spoken about it. I think we're going to be range bound for a little bit. I think what Ibrahim has explained will uh, will will kind of paint the bottom, um, and will be a healthier market moving forward. Yeah, Ibrahim, what do you got for the the per, the, the person right now shaking in their boots, going, "What should what's happened?" Yeah, I think everyone just needs to, to chill out, uh, stop looking at the news too much, uh, stop listening to, to fools like Elon Musk, you know, uh, with their tweets and whatnot. Just play the long game, you know. The wealthiest people in the crypto world have just played the long game. They've huddled. You know, look at, look at the Winklevoss twins, right? They don't care what Elon Musk says, what China says, what anyone says. They bought Bitcoin and they've just held onto it for a prolonged period of time. And now they're billionaires as a result. You know, your stash of crypto is might not be worth billions one day, but if you're patient and you don't panic sell, you know, it could be worth considerably more than it than it is now. Ibrahim, I like your style. I'm gonna have you, hopefully you can come back on, on the show. Perfect response. All right, everybody. So uh, thanks for coming on. I appreciate both of you guys, really do. And uh, let's jump back. Okay, so that's it. So I hope that cleared up a lot of misconceptions about what is going on. This is a reminder, you're gonna hear a lot of negativity over the next uh, days, weeks, and months as far as like uh, mining operation, but try to refer back to this video and actually uh, share it with friends and family or whoever is in crypto uh, so they know exactly what's going on. Don't get used to the FUD, really dig deep and uh, find the right answers. So if you like this video and you found value, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are very time sensitive on this channel. And uh, that is it for today. So thanks so much. Appreciate it. See you on the next one.